Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News at 11 starts now. New at 11, we are learning of an apparent murder-suicide in Pontiac. He's claimed the life of a barrier-breaking Oakland County leader. Good to have you with us for Local 4 News at 11. I'm Devin Skillian. And I'm Kimberly Gill. Dr. Calandra Green, who heads the county's health division, was found murdered in her Pontiac home this afternoon. Investigators say it appears she was shot and killed by her husband, who then turned the gun on himself. Mara McDonald live at the county's health division, uh, which I think is going to be closed tomorrow, Mara. Devin, that's right. Both the North Health Clinic as well as the South Health Clinic in Southfield, they're closing them down to try and give her colleagues here a chance to try and regroup. And they're also bringing in counselors. When Dr. Green didn't show up at work today, the staff at the Health Division knew something was wrong, so they reached out to family. Family members uh, went to the home, started to walk into the house, it didn't look right, smartly backed out called 911, we immediately responded, made entry into the home, and found two individuals deceased. Dr. Green and her husband, Charles, sheriff's investigators say it appears to be a murder-suicide, but say autopsies and other crime scene data collection here will be critical. It appears that our uh, female is the victim and a male individual uh, was the perpetrator. Again, that's still early. Family members I spoke to off camera at the home are in shock and trying to process this. When I reached out to County Executive David Coulter's office tonight, they too are having a hard time processing the news, saying our hearts are shattered at the news of the passing of our colleague and esteemed health officer, Dr. Calandra Green. Words cannot express how devastating this news is to our Oakland County family. Calandra was a beloved member of our team and a light to all who had the privilege to know and love her. Back here live, Dr. Green was appointed to be Oakland County's health chief health officer back in 2022. She was the first woman of color to ever have that job. We're live in Pontiac tonight. I'm Mara McDonald, Local 4. Yeah. Really terrible. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Mara. Uh, we are tracking every move in the murder investigation surrounding a Detroit neurosurgeon just a short time ago. We found Michigan State Police investigators were back at the scene of the crime. Dr. Devon Hoover's home in the Boston Edison District. There is no word yet on what brought them back to the house tonight. The only person of interest that uh, has been uh, described in this case uh, was held and questioned but then released. Hoover was found dead in an attic crawl space back on April 23rd. We continue to wait for the developments. Well, we are less than 60 minutes away from a new chapter in the crisis at America's borders. A policy known as Title 42 is about to expire. The COVID era policy allowed the U.S. to kick migrants out quickly uh, due to public health concerns. Well, now as a public health emergency ends, so does Title 42. So that's giving new hope to thousands of migrants looking to get into the country, but putting pressure on security and resources here in the United States. From the southern border to the northern, Jacqueline Francis is talking to experts about ripple effects that could be felt here in the state of Michigan. Jacqueline. Kimberly, asylum seekers that end up in Metro Detroit will likely have their day in court here at the federal building in downtown Detroit. And that's where a judge will uh, decide whether to approve or deny their request for asylum. And tonight we're talking with an immigration attorney who helps guide them through that process. As towns along the southern border are preparing for a surge of migrants in a matter of hours, Detroit-based immigration attorney Herman Dade says Michigan will also feel its effects. Even with Title 42 in place, migrants have made their way to Michigan, especially those with friends and family living in the state. I'm expecting that to increase five or ten times now uh, that the southern border is uh, open suddenly. Uh, they will be coming up into Michigan and claiming here for sure. Some migrants crossing through Michigan are destined for Canada, but that just got more complicated after President Biden and Prime Minister Trudeau struck a deal to close off the northern border to asylum seekers at unofficial crossings. So they would go through the southern border and migrate up and then come here to Michigan and then migrate into Canada. And that's been going on for decades. And uh, now for the first time in history, Canada is turning them back to the United States. Come midnight, Title 42 will be replaced with Title 8, the immigration law in place before the pandemic. 
Migrants will once again be allowed to apply for legal pathways to enter the U.S. Sometimes it'll be mischaracterized as illegal immigration. It's not. Claiming asylum is totally legal. The attorney says it'll likely be several years before these migrants go before a judge. We asked how likely it is for their cases to be approved. He tells me in Michigan, about 40% of the time, judges will approve a person's request for asylum. Reporting live in downtown Detroit, Jacqueline Francis, Local 4. Okay, Jacqueline, thank you. Today, the House passed a new border security bill, but it's unlikely to make it through the democratically controlled Senate. The bill would restart construction on the southern border wall, upgrade technology at the border, and increase funding for border agents. The Homeland Security Department is stressing migrants apprehended under Title VIII may face expedited removal, and they will be banned from reentry for at least five years. Critics say that's just not enough to deter migrants. Southfield police are trying to get ahead of one family's allegation of negligence after a young man ends up paralyzed after being taken into custody. And today, the police chief shared video from body cameras and inside the jail to show the chain of events involving Clint Willis. Police said they got a call that Willis had assaulted his elderly mother. His family says it was actually a call for help during a mental health crisis so that he wouldn't hurt himself. Inside the jail, you see he was not restrained, but as he was led to a holding cell, that's when things took a turn. You'll see in the video, he goes to the rear of the cell and then runs uh, head first into the glass wall. I wanted the family to have the information because they were functioning off of what they were told. Willis's family has filed suit saying he had a broken neck and is currently in a rehab facility, but he does face numerous charges. His family wants an outside investigation and says they will hold a news conference on Sunday. New questions tonight about the actions of a gas station clerk who got into a dispute with a customer just before three people were shot on Detroit's west side. Surveillance video shows a clerk and a gunman arguing reportedly over just $4. The clerk pushed a button to lock the doors before he could leave. But three innocent bystanders were also thus trapped in the store, begging to be let out. Police say they were shot by Anthony McRae, who's now charged with murder and attempted murder after one person died. Could the clerk face charges? Police tell Local 4 the entire incident is still under investigation. We'll keep you posted. Criminal charges are coming tomorrow in the case of a man who was choked to death on a New York subway. Manhattan prosecutors say they will indeed charge 24 year old Daniel Penny with second degree manslaughter, which could carry a prison term of up to 15 years. He's seen on video putting a chokehold on 30 year old Jordan Neely, who is described as a homeless man with mental health issues and a criminal record. Penny and two other men say Neely was threatening them and their actions were in self-defense. Penny is expected in court tomorrow. Former Detroit Pistons executive Rob Murphy is fighting back in the scandal that erupted when he was fired. His legal team is now saying Murphy was terminated even though there was an investigation that found no wrongdoing. Murphy's one-time executive assistant is suing the team, claiming Murphy sexually harassed and groped her when he was assistant general manager. His attorney says Murphy passed a lie detector test and they have an email saying he had been cleared. The Pistons have said Murphy was terminated for violation of company policy. And because it's a personnel matter, no further details will be forthcoming from the team. Whole thing headed to court. Murphy's attorney says he will publicly refute the allegations, though at a later date. Sick of careless drivers going way too fast, the city of Dearborn is installing speed humps to slow people down. pilot program kicked off today. The city is putting the barriers in three spots. The first is on Hemlock Street adjacent to the park, which is routinely filled with parents and young children. Neighbors say young people driving too fast or doing stunts has worried them. I think everybody around here is worried that some little child, some child is going to get hit here one of these days. Dearborn's mayor says complaints about reckless driving have been an ongoing quality of life issue for residents. Officials will be watching to see if the speed humps make a measurable difference.